fight our battles. How many know the bigger the battle, the, the greater the victory? Come on. The, the greater the attack, the greater the testimony, the greater the realization and, and the, the display of His faithfulness. Whoosh. Brangana my asperosis. You know, I pray tonight. I pray tonight for the right people to be here. Uh, you know, a bunch of people, you know, I got a lot of texts um, prior to the service saying, you know, kids have started school today, so we're not going to make it out, but praise the Lord. It's all good. It takes a few. just takes a few. It takes two small w- women, two little women in their 80s, in a small little place, yes. sucking on you know, tea or something, I don't know, but praying, knowing how to pray fervently to cause an awakening in a whole island that would spread across a whole nation and capture the spiritual imagination of the nations. Now that too can happen in my nation. In my lifetime. Woo, I'll be a part of it. (laughs) I'll be involved in it. Glory. Oh my, 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 my. We're going to get somewhere here tonight. I'm going to ask the team to take their seat. Uh, but but I'll, I may need you, so keep, keep on your tippy toes here tonight. Um, Rebecca, Angela, come and sit over here. I want you to, guys to sit forward. Uh, uh, Sue, you guys sit forward. Come on, guys. Let's come occupy these seats at the front. It's going to help me tremendously. So good seeing you guys here tonight. Man, oh, precious. I pray for the right people to be here. I said, I pray for the right people to be here. Do you believe you're in the right place at the right time, hearing the right things, about to do the right, right things? Glory to God. Come on, come on. You believe you're in the right place at the right time? <laughs> oh, man. In the right place at the right time. And they're, all, they're still showing up. Praise the Lord. It's awesome. Psalms 37. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor, nor be envious of workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Come on now. You yield long enough. Come on now. Um, and you'll, you, to, to evil things. You're going to run out of time. Um, here it says they'll be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Those two go hand in hand. Amen. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself. Come on now. Be passionate. Be hungry. Delight yourself. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it all to pass. Come on, He's bringing it all to pass. Come, these verses ought to, like, thrill you, cause you to, you know, behave differently, be stirred and provoked in your spirit. If your trust is the Lord, whoo, glory to God, He's bringing it all to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. And your justice is the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger. Oh my. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Man, thank you, Holy Ghost. I wrote something. I was meditating earlier. I didn't think I was going to share this. But I I tend to write things that I, I get in the spirit on my notepad, either electronic or otherwise, um, handwritten. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost guide your life. If you spend time in the presence of God, it will help you. You'll be guided. You'll start acting like Jesus. People are calling, people are calling for your death, and you're praying for them. Father, help them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't even know what they're talking about. You can't do that in your natural strength. In other words, God will help you. Whew, glory to God. When people are calling for you to, like cursing you and calling for you to die and, and inflicting all kinds of pressure, your direction, you can say, Lord, they have no idea what they're saying. Uh, it's all right. Lord, pardon them. You can't do that without the Holy Ghost's help. You can't, you can't do like what Jesus did without being guided by the Spirit, according to Galatians chapter 5, 16. Guided by the Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Ephesians 4, 27 talks about anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. How many of you can overcome anger? 
anger issues dealt with by just being guided by the Holy Ghost. Oh my. Come on somebody. Come on somebody. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. It only, it only causes harm. Tonight we're going to get somewhere. Someone say God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above beyond what I can imagine, think, or conceptualize as being possible. As even being possible. God is able to do. He eclipses my wildest imagination. Point, point to your soul. Say, never doubt God's power and ability. We believe He's doing it. We believe. We believe. I'm going to share a few scriptures as I was prompted by the Holy Ghost. Are you ready for this? Uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 19. Praise the Lord. Someone say, trickle stream, mighty river. Come on, it may start like a trickle. How many know every, every river, river, trickle, stream, mighty river? I would say number one, trickle. Number two, stream. Number three, mighty river. Mighty river. See the progress? Trickle, stream, mighty river. Every mighty river didn't begin as a mighty river. It began not at the ocean. It began as, as a trickle. See, it doesn't matter the size of where you are right now. It, it, what does matter is what you're becoming. What you're becoming more aware of. That's a better way of saying that. Because you are who you are. But you're maturing in your awareness to who you are. You're really getting acquainted with you in Christ. Hallelujah. See, every river, I mean, it, it, doesn't start at the, it doesn't start at the ocean. It starts on top of the mountain. And it builds momentum. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. So the psalmist David, can we go there? Yeah, we can. We're going to go there. Psalm, Psalm 117. Uh, Psalm 117. Look at this from the uh, Passion Translation. It says this. Let everyone everywhere shine with praise to Yahweh. Let it all out. Go ahead and praise him, for he has conquered us. With his great love, you've been conquered by his great love and conquered by his great kindness. His kindness has melted our hearts. Certain words, when I was studying and reading, especially from the, uh, the Passion Translation, grabbed my attention. I love the Holy Ghost. That word melted grabbed, it, grabbed my heart. Another word that grabbed my heart, and I'm going to read another few passages, is the word gripped, saturated, grabbed my heart too. All these words uh, grabbed me. And the Holy Ghost started directing me to certain scriptures, and I'm going to read them. And then he started uh, directing me to certain accounts that happened in the Hebrides, which I've known about, I've read about. And the Holy Ghost started um, sparking it fresh in my spirit. And he said, tell them what happened, because it's possible here. That's right. Come on. But how many know every good story leaves clues? Let it all out. Go ahead and praise him. For he has conquered us with his great love and his kindness. And melted our hearts. Melted our hearts. His faithfulness lasts forever. And he will never fail you. Find one person. Tell him. He will. And tell him. Whoa. Tell him with gusto. Because you believe this. He will never fail you. Never. You don't have to shout it, but just say it with gusto. He will never fail you. He's never going to fail you, Tim. Annie, never will he fail you. Woo. Glory to God. So go ahead and let it all out. Praise Yahweh. Woo Come on. Because of that reality, he cannot fail. Let it all out. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on. Jesus said in John 7, I'll read it from the, uh, the Passion as well. Uh, John 7, 37, he said, Then on the most important day of the feast, the last day, Jesus stood and shouted out to the crowds, All you thirsty ones. 
That's another word that jumps out to me. Come to me. Come to me and drink. Believe in me so, so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. Come on, rivers, rivers. Someone say, trickle stream, mighty river. Ooh. Mighty, mighty river. Where, why, why would a river stop? Come on, why would a river, like, stop? Because of, yeah, but if there's, come on, we're talking about England here. A, a dam's being built. But when you sit in the anoint, when you saturate, come on, that's a word for today, saturate. When you saturate and stay under the anointing, cracks begin to appear and the dam starts to fail. Woo. The flow begins and then the flow increases. And before you know it, there in just a mighty river, singular, there is rivers, plural, flowing. Oh, glory to God. How many believe that's a word, the dams? Dams are being removed. Hallelujah. What's the key? Saturation. Believe it or not, there's no hype right now in this me and in this room, but there is the anointing of God present right here, right now. I feel the Holy Ghost is just kind of just resting upon people. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Come on, somebody. I hear this in my spirit. And uh, the Lord knows what I mean by this, and I'm saying it in the wrong tense because he's already gone ahead of time. But he's, he is finding you a restful place. Kathy is finding a restful place. Oh, Jesus. It's in the wrong text, isn't it? In the wrong, wrong tense. He's done it. But be at peace. He's finding a restful place. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's contrary to so many things that people are saying. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm full of wants. No. When you discover him and have an encounter with him, you don't want anything else. The Lord is your shepherd. I have no other want, no other desire. Nothing thrills me. Um, you know, I mean, I, 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 he gives me all things for me to enjoy. I, it's not that I don't enjoy those things that he gives me. Praise the Lord, that's scriptural. I enjoy my wife, my family, the things, the, my friends, my church, you know. Uh, but, but he's my focus. He's my thrill. <laughs> I, when I'm even enjoying the things that he's given unto me, I'm reminded of his, his faithfulness and his, and his generosity. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. You've got to understand something. In a, in, in a city like Manchester, in, in, in the current time, you know, of the age, there is things that are moving at a fast rate. Would you agree? So many things are being broadcast. So many things are being say, said. It's as if, um, you know, life is like, it's like a torrent. It's like there's all kinds of stuff being thrown around it all over the place. And uh, what a shepherd would do when he's, he's, needing, to, he's needing to feed or he's needing, needing to give uh, or make sure that his flock a drinking but the the rain's being heavy the snow is being heavy and so the river's fierce he's not just gonna let the sheep go ahead and drink because their nostrils are positioned in such a way that they can't breathe and drink at the same time and so if they dip their their lips in, in uh, I don't know how they drink so I can't Demonstrate. I'm just trying to think, have I watched this somewhere? I don't know. I've never examined it if I have or taken notes. I don't know. Anyone, has anyone seen this? I haven't seen it. No, they just soak, but they can't breathe and, and drink at the same time. And if the, if the water is fast flowing, um, they're at risk of being 
uh, at actually stumbling in and drowning. And a lot of sheep drown like that. So what the shepherd will do, no matter how fierce that river is, the sheep need to drink. So right in the midst of that situation, hey, no issue. No issue. The shepherd's got it covered. Someone say, the shepherd's got it covered. So what he'll do is he'll get his, he'll start, the shepherd will start working at the bank of the river and start digging out a big U-shape in the bank of the river. So the water comes in, right? starts coming in. And so, so now the, this fresh water is coming in and it's creating a bit of like a, a, a whirlpool pool. And then it just settles. He makes it big enough. And the river is still going like crazy. But now the war is still. So right in the midst of that kind of stormy situation, you hearing what I'm saying? The shepherd makes a restful place for the sheep. Hallelujah. To drink. Come on, you can always drink. It's always the right time to drink. Glory to God. You can always, right in the middle of stuff, and then he goes on talking about, you know, he, he, he sets a table right before your, your enemies. So do, do, you, do you think the Holy Ghost is trying to say something to us? Come on, no matter what's going on, I know we, you know, you, we preach like this all the time, but come on now, just think, get that picture. He's finding that restful place so you can just drink. Woo, come on, he said, come to me and drink. And that just encourages me, amen. Let me give you these scriptures here that I want to get to. Um, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 19. It says, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer able to tread upon the heights. Hallelujah. Sure-footed. I'm just going to read scriptures right now. That's, that's all I'm going to do. Luke 3, 15, from the, new, from, the, from the Passion Translation. Luke 3, 15. During those days, everyone was gripped, gripped with messianic expectations. Believing the Messiah would come at any moment, and many began to wonder if John might be the Christ. But notice, notice their expert. They were gripped together, believing as one, believing, expect, gripped with holy expectation. Oh, glory to God. Does that jump out to you? Jump out to me? Uh, come on, your expectation is not going to be cut off, according to uh, Proverbs 23, 18. You take that. Come on, what's, what's gripping you? What, what expectancy do you have? Come on, they were gripped by expectation for the coming Messiah. Are we gripped by expectation for the coming of, of the Son, yeah. Jesus, his, his glorious return? Woo! Hallelujah. Well, what, what, what are we gripped by? Hallelujah. What, where, what are we grabbing hold of? I want to read some more, more verses here. Acts 1. Look at this. Acts 1, 13 to 14. Arriving there. Acts 1, 13 to 14. Again from the Passion. Arriving there, they went into a large second floor room to pray. Verse 14. All of them were united in prayer. Gripped with one passion. Gripped with one passion, interceding day and night. Someone say gripped. Gripped. Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 14. So we see the, we see the, the well, we see the Jews gripped before Jesus came. We saw the believers and the followers of Jesus gripped by the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now look, notice Paul here. Philippians chapter 3, 14. He said, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have this, this same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires. Oh, man. Come on, if, if, if anyone is gripped by this desire, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together, in, uh, together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one passion. Woo. Can I read it again? Uh, uh, listen to the words. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal. Run straight. 
to gain the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. I don't know if you're going to make it. It's going to be because of the anointing that you yielded to. Amen. So let all who are fully mature have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, talking about fulfilling the call, God will reveal it to them. God can reveal, hallelujah, um, holy desires and grip you so that you are gripped, hallelujah, by finishing, hallelujah, this heavenly assignment and gaining this victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. And then he says in verse 16, and let us all advance together to reach this victory prize, following one path and one passion. I love it. Revelation 22. Revelation 22, 17. Try not to preach these, because these, these are hot. You're hearing these buzzwords, though. It's not just a buzzword. It's the Holy Ghost word. There's some words jumping out here. He says, come says the Holy Spirit, Revelation twenty two seventeen. Come, says the Holy Spirit, and the bride in divine uh, um, duet, let everyone who hears this duet join them in saying, come, let everyone gripped with spiritual thirst. Who's gripped with spiritual thirst? Let them say, come. Let everyone who craves this gift of living water come and drink it freely. It is my gift to you. Come. Let everyone gripped with spiritual thirst. Whoosh. Better my spaghetti days. Gripped. Gripped by the heavenly assignment. Gripped by what's available and thirsty for it. Hallelujah. Gripped by fulfilling the desires that he set before us and and, uh, and amen, getting that victory prize through the anointing of Jesus, gripped, made possible through prayer. Notice this, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6. Hallelujah. Don't be pulled in different directions. <laughs> That's what it says. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer. Whew, come on, saturated in prayer. Gripped, saturated. Whew, glory to God. Hallelujah. Throughout the day, offering your faithful requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Let Him, let Him every detail of your life. Tell Him, sorry. Tell Him every detail of your life. Someone say gripped. Someone say saturated. Saturated. Hallelujah. And here's the deal. In the Hebrides, anyone heard of the revival in the Hebrides? Many of you are familiar with these stories. I've just pulled out a few. Um, but in a small cottage, two elderly ladies in their 80s, they were, they were in fact um, struggling physically with arthritis. So they struggled to get out of the house to even worship. But together they prayed. I think one was 82, one was 84, something like that. But they knew how to pray and press in and pray fervently. Month after month after month after month, they prayed prevailing prayer. Hallelujah. Now, how many know we've got, we got a conference coming up? And there's no mistake about uh, No, there's, It's not just, hey, a good thing to do in the month of October. There is, praise the Lord, there is, there, is, uh, there is purpose in this. Amen. How many of our prayers shall prevail? Glory to God. How many know prevailing prayer produces? Now, these ladies, they prayed. I mean, they prayed fervently. Month after month after month after month, it seemed like nothing was taking place. And then in one of the local churches, a young deacon pipes up, and he, and there's a whole bunch of other younger de deacons there, and they're praying, and he gets a hold of Psalms 24. Someone finds Psalms 24, and I want you to read it out on the mic, so we need to get a, get a mic up here. Andre, if you can grab a mic, and someone turn there. Psalms 24, verses 3 to 5. Praise the Lord. 
he starts reading this with conviction. Please read it. Psalms 24, verse 3 to 5. Read it. Read it, read it out loud for me, please. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully? He shall receive blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Hallelujah. It's a powerful passage. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in the holy place? It's the one with clean hands. It's the one with a pure heart. Hallelujah. That person shall receive the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. What, what, what did it say in verse, verses 6? Sorry, verses 5. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from the Lord, from, from the God of his salvation. Now this deacon, he said to others, and he paused, pondering it like we are, taking our time reading it. And he said, brethren, we are waiting. We're waiting night after night after night, but we are not. But are we, he said, are we, it's a question, are we right with God? If we're not right before God, we should forget it now. Then he, he lifted his hands towards heaven, this young deacon, and he cried out, Oh God, are my hands clean? Now he, he believed the word, but he was going to the Lord and saying, Lord, are my hands clean? Now I'm not questioning your righteousness. You are righteous, made righteous. How many know you can neglect so great salvation? You can neglect those, those qualities and not walk in light of it and therefore grieve the Spirit of the Lord. I want to be somebody who's gripped by the, the, the Spirit of the Lord. I shared on, on Sunday, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling it down of strongholds. What are they? First one we looked at, holiness. After much correction and much dealings with the Holy Ghost, the book of Proverbs 29 says, if you, after receiving many, if you do not change, then your destruction will come swiftly. It's not because God's, you know, killing you. No, you're exposed to the destroyer who, who you've given him a foothold. Who's hearing me here this evening? Now, I want to take it beyond that because it's not just about you, and, and, uh, but, it, you know, it's about, it's about you, it's about us, it's about the great cooperative, the, this corporate sun rising up and being used. And Father, the Spirit of the Lord should, uh, want me to share some of these things here. Is my heart pure? Remember Brother Hagen, he went before the Lord. And I would hear many teachers, instructors out, Rhema, who, you know, who walked with Brother Hagen and, and times, different services, he would go before the, you know, he, whilst he's ministering, and he would just uh, start repenting before, even before the people, saying, Father, I repent, I repent, I repent. Lord, deal, deal with my heart. That time when he was praying and the Lord showed him a vision, he started pulling things out of his heart. Uh, and there was an old tin can. Remember that? If you've read his books, and it had all this like nasty, na nasty, na nasty stuff, and all kinds of different. It was interesting how he saw what he saw, but it was all these various different traditions and different ways that he still was holding on to that he needed to get up and out. You understand what I'm saying? Lord, are my hands clean? Lord, is my heart pure? Is my motive right? Uh, uh, and my hands touching the right things. You know what I mean? Because we want to ascend, right? We want to see mighty things. Now, notice what I said earlier. Every good story leaves good clues and good, good things. And let's see it. It's scriptural. We're getting scripture on this too. 
And so instantly when he said that, Lord, are my hands clean? Is my heart pure? He fell on the floor. And an awesome awareness of God filled that barn. That night, notice this, they found themselves searched by the holiness of God. Now, what a concept. Being searched, inspected, examined by the holiness of God. Father. And then they saw things in their life that they never suspected they would see. That they needed to get dealt with. But if they didn't pray that prayer of consecration, they never would have dealt with that, never would have seen that, and it would have been a hindrance. Still no revival, no, nothing's happening. Peggy, she was one of the Smith sisters, Peggy and Christina, but Peggy, um, at the same time they were having this time of consecration, she saw in the realm of the Spirit, she saw crowds of people, many young, hundreds, swept into the kingdom. She sent a word to a reverend, uh, Reverend McKay, that mighty revival is coming. She perceived it after praying for years. She perceived now, but not she pressed through. Come on, people give up after year one, year two, year three. The Lord's going to do something, I'm telling you. He's doing something this month that's getting us ready for prevailing prayer. And we're going to hit prevailing prayer, and we will prevail and break through. The dam, come on now, is going to start crumbling. Hallelujah. Things will start, whew, glory to God. Things will start to, amen, happen like we know it can. And like we know, let me say it stronger, like we know it must in our own lives. I pray for the right people to be here. Pe people who are going to be used in this, in this great move. So the word was sent to Reverend McKay that mighty revival is coming. Peggy asked him to call together the people for special times of waiting on the Lord, praying. We need to pray more corporately. So the pastor and the church prayed repeatedly, over and over again, over again. They kept on praying. They kept on adding their supply for months, months, and months. Still nothing. You think that nothing's taking place, but how many know tremendous power was taking place? Mighty power was taking place after a long period of time of praying. Reverend McKay felt led to plan a parish mission in the winter. Contacted a Gaelic speaking minister in Edinburgh, Reverend Duncan Campbell, who, who was free to hold missions. On one of the nights he was on this mission and he was Campbell, he preached on the unwise, the foolish virgins. Then the second night, he preached on the wise, sorry, the first night was the wise virgins. The second night, he preached on the, on the foolish virgins. When he closed that second service, it was closed, as they, as they describe it, with intense silence. Like God had got a hold of everybody. They were gripped. God was speaking to hearts that night. At the close, Campbell, no one was saying nothing. It was like, I mean, you could hear a pin drop. He dismissed the crowd, and the building emptied quickly. But then suddenly, the church door opened again. And an elderly, uh, and an elder motioned for Campbell to come to the door. The entire congregation was standing outside, so gripped by the Holy Spirit that they did not want to leave. Think about it. Other people who had not attended were drawn from their homes. They didn't know what was going on, but they, they weren't even in that meeting. They didn't hear about the, uh, the foolish virgins. They didn't hear about the wise virgins. But they were drawn from their houses. They were drawn to come out and stand with the people outside the locked front door of the church. 
they weren't going home. They were gripped. They were gripped by these words of life. One of the prayer warriors of the young men's prayer group was burdened to the point of agony as he prayed out his soul for revival. I don't know this built and built because they had been praying for a long time. And it hit a peak. He poured out his soul. He supplicated. Strong men cried out for mercy. Perhaps men who never cried before cried. Person after person received assurance of salvation. Perhaps for the very first time they knew, I'm a child, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God who can be filled. I've got to be filled. Prayers of years were answered on that night. Reverend McKay went the next day to the Smith sisters to tell them what had happened. They told him they had prevailed in prayer on that previous night. They said, we struggled through the hours of the night, but we refused to take a denial. Our God is a covenant-keeping God, and he must be true to his covenant engagements. Did he fail us? Never, they said. Before the morning light broke, we saw the enemy retreating and the wonderful lamb taking the field. Woo. Come on now, I love it. Come the shepherd. The wonderful lamb taking the field. Whoosh. Come on now. The wonderful shepherd taking the sheep in the field. See, the poor, Jesus talked about the poor, poor in John t- chapter 10. He says there is a poor who must open up the gate so that the shepherd can go into the field where the sheep are. Well, who's, gonna, who's the poor? The poor is the Holy Ghost, but the porter, the Holy Ghost, can't open the gate without the prayers of the saints. So the Holy Ghost takes your prayers, my prayers, come on, our intercession, our refusal to accept a denial. Come on, somebody. If he promised us the nations, and he promised us the greatest outpouring, whoo, come on now, that I refuse a denial. Someone say, I refuse. This is what, and I was in worship this, this, this evening with you. And this is what the Holy Ghost said, uh, Isaiah 40, 40, 40, 43. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 26, put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case. Uh, that's exactly what they did. They stated their case. They refused to accept anything else. They saw, come on now, they saw the enemy retreating and our wonderful lamb taking the field. News of the revival, people not wanting to leave the meeting of that church, you know, um, uh, spread immediately across the island. The next night, buses arrived from various places filled with men and women to hear and see what God was doing. In a few days, in a few days, work in the area had largely was set aside. I mean, like people couldn't even function. Sounded a bit like the Welsh Revival, you know, when the donkeys stopped working because all the miners stopped cursing because they all got born again. (laughs) Come on, somebody. It seems like the whole place was gripped. Who's with me today? You're not bored of this? Come on, I, I, I felt the Holy Ghost say, tell them this because this is what he can do. I felt the Holy Ghost say this. But we've got to be gripped. Lord, Lord, I'm not in sin. People are so ready to say that. These young deacons didn't believe that they were in sin. But do you know what they did? They said, Lord, is my hands clean? Is my heart pure? I think they're clean. But Holy Spirit, search my heart. Search my hands. Where's my motive in light of yours? Where's my will in light of your will? Where's my priorities in line with where you need them to be? Where's my prayer time? Where's my devotion? What what am I putting my hands to? How am I treating people? How's my patience level, my long suffering? How's my speaking? How's my speaking? 
Am I speaking when I need to or am, am I not speaking when I need to? Lord, I ought to be speaking. Reveal it. Is my hands clean? Is my heart pure? Oh, man. You know, this is, can, can I say this? That if we pray like these guys pray, we're about to hit a place of supernatural boldness because that's what holiness does. Because you know there is nothing separating me and my Father. I'm not touching anything that grieves the Spirit of the Lord. And I, He's keeping me accountable to this walk of mine with Him. I'm taking this walk with Him. Woo! Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. The whole region seemed saturated with God. People saw this when they came in, those, in that meeting. They saw chains and locks of their sin that had previously bound them, broken off of them. In the whole area, um, the way people frequently would meet one another, the, the general greeting would be, have you, done, have you done business with God today? It was like, hey, hey, good, good day, good afternoon. Have you done business with God today? <laughs> that was just the normal greeting. An unsaved man came to the minister's house one day for prayer. Reverend McKay told him he hadn't seen him in the services and wondered why. Why, why haven't you come to the services? The man responded. He said, I haven't been to the church. I, I haven't been, but, but this revival is in the air. I can't get away from the spirit. What must I do? Come on, somebody. It was said whole communities were alive with an awareness of God. Campbell began uh, meetings in other churches nearby and then in another part of the island. Campbell went to a village called Arnold and called a night prayer meeting. He turned to a blacksmith in this particular meeting. These are just a few accounts. His name was John. He said, John, I feel the time has come for you to pray. How many know this is going to be the people's move? It's not just ministers. This is going to be the body of Christ. Come on now. Not some superstar preacher, some, some great prayer. It's going, to be, it's, it's going to be the Jehaziels with words right in the midst of the congregation. Hallelujah. So John, he, he had his cap in his hand. He rose, rose to pray in the middle of his prayer. He, he paused. He raised his, he was just praying generally, and then he raised his right hand to heaven. He said, oh God, you made a promise to pour water upon him that is thirsty. You made a promise to flood the dry ground. And Lord, it is not happening. Notice this is a new part of the, the island. He said, Lord, it's not happening. He paused again for a while and, and then he continued. He said, Lord, if I know anything about my own heart, I stand before you as an empty vessel thirsting for you and for a manifestation of your power he paused he didn't say anything after a moment of ten tense silence he cried out oh God your honor is at stake I now challenge you he's speaking this to God I challenge you to fulfill your covenant engagements and do what you have promised to do at that very moment oh glory the house shook. The dishes rattled in the sideboards. And wave after wave of God's power swept through the building. Some thought it was a mighty earthquake. But then Duncan Campbell, he, he remembered Acts 4.31. Whew, come on. The place where they were praying began to shake. Then the people left the meeting. The whole community was alive with the, notice, alive with the awareness of God. Whoosh, Ben and I. Streams of the blessing. Come on, Psalms. Streams of the blessing was released. Whew. Then one night, the service didn't end until between one and two in the morning. 
People began to leave. It was close to two. But then a messenger arrived saying, the revival has broken out in another church several miles away. Think about it. It's close to two in the morning. The church is packed. People don't want to leave. You know, People are drawn out of their houses to come to these meetings and they've never stood foot in a church. It's just the Holy Ghost compelling revivals in the air. The whole place is saturated because people were serious when they were crying out. There was a foundation upon which the Holy Ghost could move. It's called two Smith ladies who were praying fervently and prevailing. Oh, glory to God. So this messenger told him that revivals broke out in another church several miles away. So do you know what Campbell did? He went, all right, let's go. So Campbell and 200 other people started walking to this church. They went cross country, walking across fields, close to two in the morning. Come on now. 200 people. The whole crowd was like, we're up for it. We're going, we're going. No, no hesitation. It wasn't like, you know, uh, hey, let's, you know, think about this, pray about this. No, let's do it now. Come on, so captivated, so gripped, so saturated, so in love, so, so just taken over. Can it happen again? Can it? Come on now. Yeah, it, it, in fact, it is the will of the Lord for it to happen. As they were walking, they were taking short, a shortcut through a particular field. And suddenly the, the sky was filled with the sound of angelic voices singing. And all heard it. They all fell on their, on their knees in the field. People were melted to tears by the presence of God invading the homes. Whew. You know, when I think about even the accounts that we have in, in the scriptures, and uh, I was praying along these lines, and I was saying, Lord, I see the clues. I see never giving up prayer. I see prevailing prayer. I see fervency. But I see righteousness. I see holiness. Now, we've quoted it how many times? James 5, 30, uh, 16. It's, it, it's the fervent prayer of who? It, of the righteous man. That prevails much. It's a man or a woman who understands they are righteous. Now, you've got to know you're righteous. Now, you're righteous in Christ, but, but you, you, you also got to know that my hands are clean. I'm not in it. I'm not dabbling. I'm not contaminating the anointing of my life or uh, uh, causing, them to, causing there to be a blockage of the anointing in and on my life. My hands are clean. I prayed such prayers like that young deacon. And my hands clean, Lord. Is my heart pure? It's the man and woman who is consecrated to the hill. You understand what I'm saying? Who's consecrated, who, who prays fervently. So, so, so that's the other key. Clean hands, pure heart, and fervency. Like the Smith sisters, Peggy and, and uh, Christine. Maybe Christina. I forget. Christine. And they contended and did not accept a denial. Did you read, read that? You read it from the you read it from the Smith sisters, and we saw it from the blacksmith's prayer too. He said, Oh God, your honor is at stake. And I now challenge you to fulfill your covenant engagements and do what you have promised to do. And then the house started shaking. Do you know what? I, I think God, I, I, in fact, I believe that God, God loves those type of prayers where we put him on the spot and say, God, you, you better sh show up right here, right now. You show up right here based on your word. Where's that type of confidence and boldness going to come from? It's going to come from your union with him. Whew, my, I pleaded. Lord, you know I pleaded. And I've, seek, I've, seek, seek, I've sought for so I sought first your kingdom and your justice, your righteousness. I know. I know this is your heartbeat, otherwise I won't be praying it because I'm so consecrated to you. I know I'm praying your will, and if I'm praying your will, you hear me. So there has to be a performance of this. I have confidence. Now, God, your honor is at stake. Perform this. Hear Fill these hungry people. Fill me. I, I'm empty and I need a fresh infilling. 
God's like, I love that. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what I've been wanting. That's all I've needed. And that's exactly what God brought. And can you see the momentum of it? Whew. More and more we gripped. The river got bigger and larger. It became more fierce and, and just took over the entire island. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Come and just praise him for a minute. Is God able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that we can, anything that we've read about? Come on now, Smith, he talked about it. Beyond anything that's been seen before. You know, this is just a glimpse. We're just reading stories here. And the Holy Ghost is using it. Yeah, sure he is. He's, he is using it. But I'm, tell, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost wants us to gear up. This isn't just about getting that nice car, getting those new rims on, on that, that beast of a vehicle. It's not about that. It's not about getting those diamond rings and those fancy shoes and that new house. and All, all of those things follow. You understand? And, and that's just, a, just an added kind of benefit to help us do things without any natural earthly hindrances. And that's all important, and God takes care of those things. He died and became poor so that we could be, become abundantly provided for. That's not something that we're going to underestimate. That, that's covenant. That's relationship. That's redemption. But why are we on the earth? I'm not taking no diamonds up, up, up to heaven. I'm not taking any boat or car or anything else up to heaven. I'm going to be taking souls. I'm going to take, I'm going to take my life. I'm going to take I'm going to take my walk of faith. I'm going to take my, my obedience. I, I'm going to take my journey, the race that I've ran. I'm going, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to take him saying to me, well done, my servant who served my purpose. Well done. Good. That's what I want. I don't want anything else. I don't want anything else. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Do we mean the prayers when we say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Do we mean that? I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll say whatever you want me to say. I'll sing whatever you want me to sing. And then he says, all right, you mean that? All right. Go over here. Oh, my God, oh, it's inconvenient. Oh, it's maybe next year. He'll just move on to the next person. With all due respect, there's more people in town. There's more, he'll bypass people to do what must be done based on hearts set or not. So where are we in the picture? Whew. Well, we're praying daily, corporately, and we're praying privately to don't substitute. Don't substitute your private life for, or, you know, instead of praying privately, you're just not doing the public. You understand what I'm saying? The corporate. But where are we in this whole journey? Well, we're praying and we're giving it some. Amen. Well, we haven't seen anything. Well, nothing happened for, for Peggy and Christine for a long time. Well, how long is it going to take? As long as it needs to take. One thing is we're not going to watch the clock. We're just going to pray and enjoy the work that we, we're going to get done. And we're going to expect and we're going to be used and expect to be used to spark it in the hearts of many others to pray. Come on, somebody. Man, I'm excited. In Acts 13, verse 5, verse 2, excuse me, to verse 5, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they being the, you know, the uh, Antioch leaders and, uh, of the time, uh, when they had prayed, laid hands on them, they sent them their way. And then he goes on to say, so being sent out by the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Come on, they were, they were sent out by the Holy Ghost. Uh, they went down to, how do you say that place? 
Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And uh, when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. Amen. They also had John as their assistant. So they were not resisted. They were assisted by uh, divine help. John was uh, pre, pre-packaged blessed blessing for them to aid them. But these leaders, and I want you to get this, in light of what I've just said about the revival in the Hebrides, these prophets, teachers in Antioch, when they were praying, they were just at a, at a, meet, at a prayer meeting. Don't miss this here. They were just at a prayer meeting. There was no direction. No, they had no idea that the Spirit of God was going to do what He did. They were just going to fast and pray, coming together to fast and pray and worship. And suddenly the Holy Ghost starts speaking. It's like a meeting like this. Because, so, you know, okay, let's have a prayer meeting. So we just start praying. And then suddenly the Spirit of God says, no, I'm separating. I'm se- separating Saul and Barnabas for the work of the ministry. You guys come here. Then the leaders come. And they lay hands on you and send you out. It's like... Oh my days, that happened quick. It surprised everyone, but that's what the Holy Ghost did. How many know when you when you pray and fast, he speaks and he sends people. But notice there was a lot of prayer going on by these prophets, teachers in Antioch, these leaders, these apostolic leaders here, these apostles. Whew, glory to God. Their prayers prepared a ministry path for Paul and Barnabas. I want you to get it. Their prayers built a path, a ministry path for Paul and Barnabas for them to take. Hallelujah. Their prayers sent resurrection power out ahead to smooth the way so that they would be well supplied both spiritually and naturally on their missionary journey. Now, as a result, what happened? When Paul and Barnabas stepped down to do what God had told them to do, immediately, whew, things started falling into place. They went down to the place where they needed to uh, catch, catch a boat to sail to where they were needing to go. And guess what? There was a boat made ready for them. God had prepared a natural boat for them. They didn't have to wait for a, for a boat to come. There was a boat made ready for them. Well, how did that show up? The prayers. Resurrection power paved the way for them to take that path to go ahead and do what they were supposed to do. Everything starts slowing into place. Hallelujah. Oh, man. They didn't have to wait around. They didn't waste time. The power of God went ahead. Hallelujah. To make preparations. How did that happen? Prayer. Prayer. Come on. Prayer is going to start building some stuff. Prayer is making tremendous power, and that power is creating the pathway. There is a resurrection power is going forth, and there's a highway being built, literally being built, so that people can take that. Oh, Father, thank you. Now, now this is my conviction. God will not send ministers into the harvest field until a path is cleared for them. God's not going to thrust somebody into situations where there's not been any spiritual preparation made. This is why Jesus said, pray the Lord of the harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest first. So he said, prayer comes before the sending of the, of the laborers. The sending follows the praying. Someone say that. The sending follows the praying. Ooh, come on now. For Paul the apostle to truly be effective in ministry, the path had to be raised up for him to walk it on in order for Jesus to even occupy his earthly ministry. A path, a way had to be built. And it was built by a voice in the wilderness crying out, making a way in the wilderness. For who? Jesus. John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Do we need it? Oh, you better believe it. Jesus needed it. If Paul needed it. Oh, there is a need for a path to be cut for us through prayer. By riving, r- riving, rivers of living, water flowing from the spirits of praying believers. We need to pave the way. Like Peggy. 
like Christine, pave the way. Let those deacons pray. Woo, come on, like, 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 like Reverend McKay prayed. Oh, my master, get him out. And I want us to mix faith with this because we're praying. We're praying, but we have to believe that things are prepared, being prepared and built. Resurrection power is going forth. And I'm telling you, this whole community, who believes? Once again, come on, once again, once again. The, how many know it's due? Someone say, it's due, Lord, it's due. It's about time, and we, that, that, that one word, time, has been coming up over and over and over again. I, I, I spoke to you, Evie, about it. Time, time, time. I spoke to a minister yesterday for a long period of time on the phone about timing. Whew, you posted something today on that. We were talking about it yesterday. Was it today? Or it was today. I, th- I think I saw that. Now is the time. Come on, now is the time. Oh, cool, God, we've got mass about Now, who's gripped here? Who's gripped here? Now, it, it just takes just two people being gripped. And I, I'm, you mark my words. It will be told that there was men and women who learned how to get a hold of God and pray. For a few minutes, come on, let's just, and it's going to take a lot more than a few minutes, you know. But what are we doing? What are we doing tomorrow morning? We're praying. What are we doing at 6 a.m.? We're praying every day. Every day we're praying at 6 a.m. You can log on. You can hook up to it. We're, we're on every day. Faith life prayer, and, it's, and it's, it's powerful. And I want you to hook up whether or not you feel like it or not. I, 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 I urge you to be a part of it. We've been doing it for how many months now? Three months. And, uh, and it's growing. Glory to God. Keep at it, says the Spirit of the Lord. Keep at it. Keep at it. Whew, I believe this month is important. This is the first flow service of the, of the month. This month, September, is important. I believe it's significant. Come on, significant si- September. Praise the Lord. Let it be. Significant supply of the Spirit in September. Glory to God. Oh, necessary for, for the things that will take place in October, which will be necessary for the things that will take place in November and December that will gear and prepare us for the new decade in 2020. And I've been perceiving it, and many, many others have too, for years. I've been talking about 2020. Father, oh, grip us, saturate us. It begins with the house. It begins with us crying out sincerely and searching our hearts. Father, I pray that everyone in this room and under the sound of my voice, those who can hear me on the live stream, that, Lord, we would mean it when we pray. Lord, is my hands clean? Is my hands clean? Is my heart pure? Oh, man, I'll go to get a dice. Vrene mango popra di spede dai, popocora di spede dai. Come on, just go before him with outstretched hands. Just even like this, just surrendering. Look, look at my hands here. Lord, I'm yielded to you. Whoosh. I'm yielded to you. Nothing else matters. I'm telling you, nothing else in life matters. But His plan and His will and His way. And, oh, come on now. Zimango praho sabaradisis. Denge de geta bo sabaradilko to gina marador fideya baradais. Brangon donke pipapa saparadifida bai baduko sabaradisis. What the Father wants, now is the time. Come on, now is the time for those who, yeah, will worship in spirit and in truth. That's what the Father's always been looking for. But now is the time. Come on now. You pray right from your heart to Him. Right now. Come on. Come on. Part of my job here tonight is just to help you get before Him and make it real. Thank you, Lord. It begins tonight, guys. Come on. It begins tonight. We don't want meeting after meeting. We don't want church as, as, uh, as usual. Whew. We're building something. We're seeing things accomplished. We're building something. Amen. We're preparing the way. We're pushing back forces of darkness. We're contending. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. We're contending. We're pleading. We're pleading our case. We're not accepting a denial. We're putting God at it. We're make, making Him aware of what He said. Not that He's forgotten, but He loves us to contend. Hallelujah, Lord. 
Your honor is at stake. Your word is at stake. You've got a bunch of people here, Lord, who want to be used by you. You've got a bunch of people here tonight who want to be used by you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Better to all the impurities being purged out by you. Pure, purge yourself. Come on now. Purge your, purge yourself. Ma, thank you, Holy Ghost, helping me to speak here tonight. Purge yourself. Hallelujah, Lord, so you can be used for mighty things as vessels of honor, ready for the Master's use. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And watchful. I don't want to like hype the moment. This is between you and the Lord. It's a corporate thing as much as it's, a, it's an individual thing here tonight because it's going to take us all together in one accord, in one, in one mind, one, one focus, one passion as we read it. Gripped with one, one call. Hallelujah. But you mean business here tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. We trust you. We believe you. Whew, you're using, you're using the ready. You're using the yielded. You use the clean, the pure. Whoosh, but it is. Come on. My faith pure. My joy sure. My faith pure. My strength pure. Sure. Glory to God. My, my strength sure. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're going to need a measure of strength unlike what we've walked in before. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I said it this morning. If you walk in holy, you shall be persecuted. Okay, it's going to take a measure of strength. It's going to take a measure of strength. Glory to God. My faith pure. Someone say, my faith faith pure my joy sure my faith pure my joy sure my faith pure my joy sure my power my strength sure hallelujah Lord Jesus getting stronger getting stronger come on getting stronger now I'm getting stronger. Oh, glory to God. Mighty is the hand upon my life. Mighty are the weapons in my hand. Oh, mighty, mighty is my God on my behalf. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. My faith pure. My faith pure. My joy sure. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Have you come on up. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First pure, First then, pure power. then power. First thank pure, you, then power. Oh, glory. Father, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your spirit in this place. Father, we come before you together. We thank you, Lord. We're seeking you, and we find you. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you speak to every yes, heart Lord. here tonight. And any heart that is um, withholding or... Any heart that is, any heart that knows it's not where it needs to be. Father, there is grace Thank in this place Jesus. to open that place up to come right back into you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Just take a moment yes, right Lord. now. And those things that God puts on your heart yes, to drop Lord. or to stop or to turn away and from, and just, and just come before, just make peace with it. Come on. And you know that his grace is sufficient. So whatever it is he's telling you to do, he is well able to make sure that you are able to do it. God, it is. Yes, Lord. Yes, so in the Lord. name of Jesus, that's a lie from hell that yeah, you're not going to make it again. If you make that commitment again, it's just going to be the same old loop. No. Trust. Trust. Those cycles Trust. are In the name of Jesus. Trust. Ooh, we lean into the helper this evening. And we thank you for your help. Thank I thank you, you Father. You are helping every person thank here. You, everyone watching online. Everyone. Oh, and it's, it's not a, an excuse if you don't know enough or, or, or you're not strong don't. enough. Or he is well able to meet you where you're advice. at. Exactly what you need to thank do. You, He's Jesus. well able to help you do Jesus. it in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus. We thank receive you, Father. that. 
Right now, we just come before you. In the name you. of Jesus, glory to we God. We receive that grace to turn. To yes, in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. His goodness Thank leads, you, Jesus. leads to repentance. Do you know, on Sunday morning, Joel Thank was, you, um, in fact, the worship team was ministering, and, and something was just coming to my heart, and then Joel got up and spoke, and, it, you know, what he spoke about, about holiness and things just really resonated. But I had this picture while they were worshiping. Uh, it was just the mouth, almost like that trumpet, which is an instrument that it's pure, to be pure, to be reserved for. Purity, it's an instrument of godly worship. And here we are worshiping, and it's so easy to, to see it as that. But every day, how we live our lives, how we speak over people, how we speak over situations, how we exalt positive, not just positivity, but do you know what I'm saying? How we see the good and the God, you know, thing that is trying to happen there. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this child is doing something that shouldn't be doing. And instead of just talking negatively, you say, you know what? I really believe that they are able to, to turn this around. It's just speaking life over things, not complaining. Just allowing yourself to just yield to that help, to not complain, not get stuck in ruts where you're negative all the time. He's well able. But it's that instrument. But that's where you really can get tripped uh, up it's your father, instrument that is reserved how can how can you have two things come from one source the bible says how can you have hot and cold it's our instrument that is dedicated to him yeah. always yeah always yeah. come on let's make a commitment yes. to speak well over what God is doing in this land. We're not going to magnify what is going on and just be like, yeah, you know what? It's crazy. The coworker next to you is like, man, what is Boris all about? He's crazy. And you're like, yeah, he's crazy. And this whole thing is going down. And God is on the inside going, what are you doing? You're designed for this time. Come on, Esther, get up. Not you, Esther. I looked at you then. That was weird. Esther's rise up Come on. and speak to the king yeah. on behalf of your people. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come get on, up Abby. and on, speak. Abby. Yes, yes. Speak life all the time. But do you know, as we're here tonight, what yeah, keeps coming yeah. to my heart is just this word preparation. And you're talking about the Smith women, these 84, 82 year old women, one blind, one bent over with arthritis. They couldn't go to church, so they just gave themselves to prayer. They're, they're like, we're on the way out anyway. We're just going to give all our time to prayer. And they just wanted to see revival in their generation. Ooh, I mean, how simple. On. And if all of us would just simplify so our nice. vision, good, our good, values good, would good, line good, up. Good, Come on, if we were bringing that together, the intentional living yeah. with that can you imagine the supercharged moments with God but it's lining that vision so clear your values too that's an intentional life Glory to God. but so many times we have all these plans and all these things I'm gonna do this next year and I'm gonna do that and it's just simple that's the power in that but that isn't even what I wanted to say they prayed but do you know over in Edinburgh there was a man preparing. And this is what came to my heart, Joel, when you were speaking, is preparation. Prayer prepares the way. But it isn't always that prayer does, you know, on that person. It's prayer brings that preparation from afar. What God has prepared from afar to a situation. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. draws everything into yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. We need to be preparing because if we're believing God truly for revival, then our actions will line up with our expectation and we will be preparing for revival. So it's not just tomorrow, Lord, you'll send the rain. And it's like, yeah, you will. But today I'm out in the field and I am preparing for what you're bringing. And how that looks in our life is we're in the word. And we are expanding our heart and expanding our lives and growing bigger as people. Finding out who we are in Christ. Making ourselves stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger so that our vessels are like this instead of like, you know, God, would you do something? It's like, oh, Father, I know it and I am ready. And so when the rain comes, it's just whoosh. So here's the thing about rivers. You're saying about rivers. Every river has a source and every river had banks. You know, you don't just have a flood that washes down. Every ring river has a course. Oh no, there's something that's been prepared beforehand for it to flow in. 
So preparation is key. So in this time, as we are one month exactly from prevailing prayer, I feel a conviction from God tonight to just go before him and say, Father, what would you have me do to prepare every day? in the lead up and I think we need to live our life in moments like that too instead of like in next year and then I'll do this and no 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 it's like today and my goal is this week and my goal is this month and I'm going to review yeah. my goals and then I'm going to be here and I'm going to you just live intentionally Thank so here we are, one month from Prevailing so Prayer nice, Conference. We nice. believe in God for revival in this land. Let's line oh, up fall. our day. What are we doing today in the Word? What are we doing today to fuel that, to prepare personally for that? Come on. Prepare. But you know, God send a preacher. And God goes, you're that preacher. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's coming. That's coming. I will be that preacher. I will be that preacher. Well, one day you're going to have to get up and preach. And you want to be like, shababa, because there's nothing in there. <laughs> you want to have something in there. God says, go. You want to go with something. Prepare the way of the Lord. Come on, let's just go before him right now. Would you all just stand? We're kind of at that time. It's late, and we've heard this word, and it's been so wonderful. So Holy Ghost. And everybody with us online joining us. Father, we just come before you tonight as a people hungry. And we just work with what you're preparing. We hook ourselves up to what you are doing. That anointing being poured out and all of that. But every day there's a discipline. And that discipline opens up a doorway. <laughs> <laughs> and that doorway leads to a pathway. And that pathway grows brighter and brighter. But every day, there's discipline. I hear him say, every day, there's discipline. Every day, it opens a door. It opens a pathway. And that we will follow every day. So, Father, I pray that we would grow stronger in these things. Sharpen up in these things. Hallelujah. 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 Shikata Tora Bademana Basike Tatana Murro Oshiki Diana Murre. Lija Katoro no Nora Bara. Le Shakato Dora Basika Damende. Leda Manganda de Beja Gandenda or Songunda. And I hear what Timothy was told. Stir up that gift. Stir up that gift. Stir up that gift that is in you. That is in you. That is upon you. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Get witnessing. Get witnessing. Just start to tell your bus driver. Start to tell that security guard. Start to tell the people that you see every day. Just start. Start where you are. Start where you're at. Get online. Start to tell people about Jesus online. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Prepare where you are. Father, it's time for souls. We believe it. Yeah, it is time yeah, for souls. Yeah, 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 it is time yeah. for souls. Oh, Manchester is going to be won not by people just moving around and going where whatever is going on. It is time for souls. In the name of Jesus, it is time to see our sons and daughters full of the fire of God. It is time for souls. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 So we're going to hook up with here every single day. You can join us on prayer. Um, and, and we're going to go home now. Pray Praise the Lord, you're blessed. God's been speaking to your heart, and that's what he does. Amen. Go online. Faith, Facebook, Faith Life Prayer. One word, Faith Life Prayer. And it's a closed group. You're asked to be invited to it, and you'll get a live notification. If you if you let yourself be, like, ticked on with notifications, you got to sign up for that. And they will let you know when we're live every morning um, at 6 a.m. And that's just one way that we want. We just felt led by the Lord to do this, to um, make a kind of stirring every single day, to just keep fueling. And often we get on there, and we're in the Word, and we're praying together. So um, it's just, a, and, you know, and also with Facebook, you can go online and watch an archive. So your, your morning might not be a 6 a.m. morning, although live is awesome. You can maybe jump in there at the at 6 p.m. or whatever it is you want to do. So you're part of it um, when you can be part of it. So that's, that's just something that that's can help. Awesome. Amen. What I wanted to say is tonight, I believe something as subtle as it may seem has happened in us. And um, no one's swinging off the light fittings. But I'm telling you, something significant has happened. And I want us in these meetings not to consider it like how we have t in times past and just come to, to the meet. 
I want us to come with our, if I could put it this way, just with our, with our all, you know, with our A game. I don't even like that phrase, but you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm coming because I'm coming to produce with my saints, with expectation. Amen. Be excited to come. Tell people to come. And I'm telling you, when we start working like that together, it's like we'll be so swift to get in. Like the worship leaders aren't going to take 10 minutes to 20 minutes to try and get us to a place that we need to get in order for us to do what we need to get done. No, it'll be like, whoa, we've flown in again. Oh, we're working with it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and much track shall be built and much progress shall be made in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Please, before you run out, grab someone's neck, encourage somebody, just one person. Tell somebody how much they value, <laughs> how much you value them. Don't hurt them now. I mean, give them a massage. If you're going to give them a massage, give them a good massage. But you understand what I mean? That can only, that's only possible with your wives or spouses. Uh, for the offerings, um, I'm going to ask the steward just to be on the, on the back. If you want to just drop it off on your way out, that would be awesome. Praise the Lord. I've got mine. If you've got yours, you can drop it off at the back there. But love on somebody before you leave. I love you. We'll see you at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Be blessed. Thank you, Lord.